Welcome back to Story Talk Wrestling. In today's episode, we're going over top 10 MMA turn pro wrestler wrestlers. Not based on our or favorites. Or vice versa. Not based on our favorites, but based more on success. But first, before we get into that, my uncle Steven got me this pro wrestling magazine subscription. So shout out to him so I can use this in future videos and stuff. Thank you. PWI, the leader in pro wrestling magazines. Mm-hmm. Okay, so our honorable mentions, first off, do you want to do the first one? Yes, we have Stephen Bonner, yes. which my dad said had, like, the fight of the century or something. Him and Forrest Griffin had the greatest fight in Ultimate Fighter history. Ended up getting both of them contracts in UFC. He recently passed away. From what I understand, he'd been getting into pro wrestling. He'd gotten really good, apparently, and he was working for Great Northern Wrestling, and he got a spinal infection. Mm. And the doctors thought he was just trying to get pain pills, and so they pretty much didn't see him. Why would you ignore somebody? Because he's on, he's on pain management already, so he gets so many pills a month, and that you still got to do your job as a doctor. But he died of a spinal infection. That's unfortunate. Mm-hmm. Because he broke his back, and they didn't know it. How do you not X-ray somebody and say, "Oh yeah, you broke your back"? Our next honorable mention. Yes, Marina Shafir. You can tell she's an honorable mention because she's not that good. I'm sorry, she's not a good wrestler. Are you basing your list on whether they're a good wrestler or good at MMA? It's more about success in wrestling, and she's not really that successful in wrestling either. She's worked at WWE and AEW, but never really gotten over in either place. So, I think she's good. She's just she's one of those people that started pro wrestling later mm-hmm. and at least she's not as bad as Jessamine Duke or whatever it was <laughs> that's true <laughs> she's better than her yeah our number 10 is Don Fry Don Fry the Predator mm-hmm. so my dad watches his podcast and stuff and I've watched like a few of his MMA stuff but I've never really seen a lot of it so I'll let my dad take over on this one well he's he did UFC you know, did Pride over there in Japan. He had a couple amazing fights. One of my favorites is the one with Tank Abbott. But if you type in his name, this one fight comes up with a guy, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce his name. He was a Japanese guy, about 6'5", Japanese guy. And they pretty much just stand there and punch each other in the face until one of them gets tired. But Don Fry, he did most of his pro wrestling in Japan also because it's more of a physical, strong style and that was what fit him. He mm-hmm. never came to WWE or anything like that. But Don Fry is our number 10. Tori's number 9 is someone that I think she has a crush on. Mm-hmm. Bro. I'm so out of his league. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Matt Riddle, who just got released from WWE, thankfully, because I don't want to look at her stupid bare feet. That's gross. Where she was like a normal person. I think Matt Riddle is an amazing pro wrestler. I thought Matt Riddle is was a very good uh, MMA fighter. I think Matt Riddle makes a lot of enemies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why's that? Is he just not easy to work with? I think he just doesn't care about politics and business. Mm. Politicking and stuff. I don't enjoy watching him. I don't either. I think he's a great pro wrestler. He can be good, but I still don't want to look at him. Is it the shoes? Yes. Is it the shoes? <laughs> That's a famous saying from the 90s. You I, can leave that in there. I don't. I never heard that before in my life. <laughs> it's a basketball thing. Oh. Okay, so coming in at our number eight is someone who was once Tori's favorite pro wrestler of all time. And they had a miserable UFC career. And that would be Mr. Sam Hunk. I don't... I, no, no more. No, I'm not a wrestling fan of him anymore. I will say as far as uh, MMA, he was old before he ever started training for it. He was beat up before he ever started training for it. And he made a whole lot of money for two fights. whole lot of money. I'd get beat up for that much money. I'd get beat up tomorrow for that much money. So Dana White, call me. I'll, I'll fight. <laughs> you pay me as much as you paid CM Punk, I'll fight. And you'll get beat up. I will. And I'll cash that check. <laughs> you'll be like, I'll pay my medical bills with those checks. <laughs> and I'll have $30 left over. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so next on our list, I'll let Dad take over this one. 
It's Dan Severin. Dan Severin. Known as maybe one of the boringest UFC fighters of all time. However, nobody could beat him. He was the one that really taught people that wrestling was effective. Mm. I mean, he went in there. He just wore his little sweat shirt and his trunks and his boots and just went in there and just annihilated people. They would try to be doing all this kickboxing stuff, and he'd just pick them up, throw them down, and tie them up in a knot. And he was amazing. His pro wrestling career, not as amazing as his UFC and MMA career, but he was still good. It's just they wanted him to do what he did in UFC in WWE. And it just didn't doesn't translate because it's not a very fascinating, fascin- exciting mm-hmm. match. Now, you take Dan Saver and you put him back in pro wrestling of the 70s and early 80s, it would have been huge. Unfortunately, you put him in the 90s when... DX, DX and NWO. Or- yeah, and swantons and... People going through tables and, and ladders. ladders, and then you got this guy wrestling. It just came across as boring. Boring, even though I thought it was great. So next one, one of my favorites, you you guys will know, is Shayna Baszler. And the reason she's not higher on this list is based on success of wrestling itself, not my favorites, but favorites, uh, the general favorites of fans overall. And you guys know I'm a big fan. She's great. I think she's probably the best female UFC uh, transition to wrestler. Oh, by far. Uh, but unfortunately, she did not really get over that well. I think if she would have had a manager and they would have booked her right, it would have been a lot different. If they'd have made her the female Brock Lesnar and gave right. her someone like Paul Heyman mm-hmm. and just had her go in there and just annihilate people, they they did it. They started it. She had that elimination chamber match where she defeated everyone in the chamber. Mm-hmm. And then, like, it's like the next week, that just goes away. It's like Tony Khan's book in that or something. Yeah. It's like, oh, you did something really great? Yeah, go away for a month. Yeah. I say they should have had that happen. And then instead of just, oh, Paul Heyman manages both Brock and Shane, how about everybody that's been in MMA start a faction that's like MMA to wrestlers, wrestlers? Bingo. Good idea, Booker Tory. Mm-hmm. Booker T. Ori. <laughs> <laughs> Booker T. Ori. I like it. Give her a crown and call her Queen Booker T. Ori. <laughs> For our next one, our number five, we have to say this. We, the people. I did that with the wrong hand. Whatever. <laughs> but you guys know I was a huge Jake Swagger. That was his old name. Uh, fan whenever I was a kid. Because I was like, oh, Rusev. Communism is bad, like the you know the typical American two thousands kid basically, but anyway now I'm like that was so cheesy. What was cheesy about it? He was waving his Russian flag, talking about Vladimir Putin. <laughs> he was trying to get in the face of all the Americans, and only one American is going to stand up to him, and that's the real American American. <laughs> it's like he was trying to be Hulk Hogan, but it was in like the two thousands and early two thousand tens, so it just kind of fell flat. But he was uh, kind of successful recently at AEW, where, you know, the, I like this hat thing, yeah. that was pretty funny, and he is good, it's just, they didn't really do a lot with him, so. No. They started the whole push with him and their Zeb, Zeb Coulter, Zeb Coulter, and it was great. They even brought Cesaro in, and then they jumped the shark when they brought Alberto Del Rio in, but had they just left it with Jake Hager, maybe even Cesaro, I think. You know, just keep it going. You know, keep something going for more than six months. Yeah. Besides Roman Reigns. Oh yes, no kidding. That I think I think I saw a thing today where it was like, um, Roman Reigns has been champion for this many days. He's defended it zero times. <laughs> <laughs> I guess whatever works. Yeah. But Jake Hager is also is undefeated at Bellator. Mhm. And uh, I believe he's undefeated in all MMA. But when your arms are eight feet long, yeah, you can just punch and not get punched. Yeah, you, you your can, arms they are so can't long. get they can't get close to you. Yeah, and if they do get close to you, he's an all American wrestler, so he he knows how to handle them there too. It's so, like X Men or something. Yeah, <laughs> he's got like superpowers, like Street Fighter. Yeah. So Jake Hager comes in at number five. All right, so our number four is Bobby Lashley. You guys know I'm not a Bobby Lashley wrestling fan. I think that. 
whenever he was a baby phase, it just felt too try hard to we gotta get this over and nobody cared about it. So that's why I'm kinda like, eh. And Leo Rush was super annoying. And even whenever they tried to make him a baby face, everybody's like not having it. And I just don't really like it that much. But he is successful in both MMA and wrestling. So I'll give him props for it I think he's a, a great all like collegiate wrestler. He's a great collegiate wrestler. He is good at pro wrestling. But he just never connects with an audience in pro wrestling. No, it's he's like boring. It's just he never gets through the camera to the person. Mm-hmm. And so to me, that's why he doesn't come in higher on this list. He's got the body. He's an athletic. He can fight legitimately. He's he's never hurt anybody that I've ever seen doing pro wrestling. He just doesn't connect have a to an audience. That's it. He doesn't have a personality. Mm-hmm. So that's why he is down on the list a little bit. And our number three is somebody that, again, not really a fan of, but I'll give them props for it to do, and that's Ronda Rousey. She is boring to me, and it's super, like, I know wrestling's not realistic, right? But every time she, like, beats up Triple H, it's like, really, really, like, you, I'm sorry. You may be strong, but you're not Triple H strong, right? <laughs> Even whenever he's, like, having health problems, he could still beat you up, right? <laughs> 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 but anyway, I just thought that, again, kind of like Bobby Lashley, never really got through to me with a personality or anything. Both as a babyface and a heel, I just kind of was bored both ways. Yeah. I just never really felt a connection, but again, I'll give her props for it to do. She does you know, have an impact in wrestling and MMA. She was very huge in MMA, so I'll give her props for there. But again, I just don't like the... I just don't really connect to her as a fan. And I kind of thought it was a bit ridiculous that she took over the Rowdy Rowdy Popper thing. Because it's like, nobody's going to be Rowdy Rowdy Popper. So stop trying to... Well, to me, if you're going to take over that shtick, you have to be good on the mic. Right. Because that's what Piper was famous yeah. for. I mean, that'd be like trying to be the new Honky Tonk Man and not being able to sing or play guitar. Yeah. I mean, it's... it's <laughs> same thing. Yeah, same, same thing. thing. To me, Ronda Rousey was a pioneer in UFC as far as women yeah. go. And so I'll give her credit for that. She's a silver medalist in judo. So good for her on that. She trained her whole life leading up to that moment. Mm-hmm. Good for her. I will say when she got into pro wrestling, she was much better than I thought she would be. But she's still not the same level, I don't feel, as Shayna Baszler. And then you got that next level of Charlotte Flair, Bailey, and all of them. You know, and I don't think Ronda ever came close to that in pro wrestling. Number two is someone that I personally in thoroughly enjoyed their pro wrestling and their UFC career because just like Dan Severin and Don Fry, this person did it before there was weight classes and gloves and rounds. They went in there and they fought. They didn't know how many times they were going to fight that night and they didn't know how long the fight would go and that is the most dangerous man in the world, Ken Shamrock. He received the most brutal chair shot to the head I've ever seen. Yes, they were horrible. (laughs) The only thing that comes close is Mick Foley when he's handcuffed. But I thought Ken Shamrock, I don't know if The Rock would have risen to the level he did without Ken Shamrock. Him and Ken Shamrock had some of the best matches ever. I didn't know till recently that Ken Shamrock did like territory pro wrestling before he got into MMA. I didn't know that. So that's why he transitioned so well to WWE. And he was really, really good. You go back and you watch where he first came into WWE. He was much better than a lot of these people are after being at NXT for five years. Yeah, very impressive. He was very impressive at pro wrestling and at UFC. So that's why he comes in number two. Now our number one. Everyone already knows it. Everyone already knows it. Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar! (laughs) Again, another person I hated as a kid for some reason. I don't know why you hated him. I've always I've always thought Brock was awesome. Well, he was also a heel whenever I was a kid, so I yeah. was automatically like, boo, bad guys. <laughs> <laughs> but obviously I like him now. He's great. And there's a lot of people that, for example, Ronda Rousey, that I personally think 
They go out there because of their fame and MMA. Not because of wrestling talent. Brock has wrestling talent. And he's not just, well, I got famous in MMA, so I guess I'm here now. It's, it's more to it than that. I actually think Brock was better after he left. Mm-hmm. And he did the football, he did the UFC, and then he came back. Mm-hmm. I think he was better at pro wrestling when he came back. Mm-hmm. Because it's almost like he started selling. Oh. He, you know, before he left, it's, I don't know if it, if it was an ego thing or if people were just telling him, don't sell, don't sell. Mm-hmm. But when he came back, you know, he could be in the ring with someone like, you know, Dolph Ziggler and take a super kick and sell it for three or four mm-hmm. minutes. Claymore kick at the 2020 Royal Rumble. Yeah, he took a, that Claymore kick and he flew over that top rope with it. Mm-hmm. You know, he made Drew McIntyre look... I like Drew McIntyre. He's yeah. one of my favorites. But he made him look even badder by taking that flip. And, it, that, and that's what he's learned is he learned how to build up your opponent so that when you do beat him, it's that much more impressive. I think Brock might be one of the greatest professional wrestlers of all time. And had it not been for a health issue, I think he would have kept the UFC championship a little bit longer. Mm-hmm. Thank you for watching. Comment who you think the best MMA transition to wrestler is, or anybody that we left off, for instance. If you like, comment, share, subscribe, go in the description, check out my merch store, and like the channels. Bye! Hey. <laughs>